congratulations. We have 300 subscribers. We do. But there's not so much congratulations because... So this, this award was for 100. And this award was for 200. Oh. So. And this award... <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cardier. I am Prunehenge. Prunehead? Prunehenge. I have too much hair. My brother is my only barber and he's lost his haircut equipment. And nobody else can cut my hair. I'm like Samson. I know. I don't think he had you have old... a fluff on your eyebrow. Yeah, I'm sure I do. I'm, it's from all the hair I have. I have too much hair. <laughs> um, Buy him new equipment. I'm glad I'm not like Samson. Because my hair is just so unruly. If I had to grow it out, it would be, it would be tough. I you never only... had his haircut. Why wasn't it down to his waist? I don't. Maybe it know. was. Well, I mean, in the movie I... it wasn't. No, but also in the the new movie, which I don't know if this is more accurate to um, the actual region of where Samson's from. I'm not speaking on it, but it was um, he had more of African hair, mm. and so he had it like dreaded, which. If you look at the, the Rastafarians, that's part of what they do. They don't cut their hair. Mm-hmm. Um, they, or so Sikhs. It's, it's easier than with European hair to let it grow because you can keep it together rather than just have it flow. Keep it together. Keep it together. And this here is Frank uh, wearing a new jacket of mine. I'm going to a 90s party. A new but, a new but not new. A new but not new to me, but been around for decades. Been around since... Since decades, isn't that crazy? I'm going to a 19, sometime in the 1900s. I'm going to a 1990s party. 90s, which for some of your my the roaring 90s. Just kidding. Uh, for some of my our viewers, like you, when I brought it up, you said the 90s. That's right now. Well, what are right. you doing? Like what you mean, current day party? <laughs> yeah, it's like oh, so what are you going to wear? Like your outfits from last year? Right. The 90s were like if you want to go central, let's go 95. Okay. That was 25 years ago. No? 23 years ago. No? No. <laughs> 20, your brothers were born in 1995. 26. 20, 27 years ago. Seven or eight, yeah. 20, almost 30 years ago. Yeah. That's wild. That's awful. So it's now, it's retro. Like, can you imagine, right? When you were, uh, when you when you were five, you wouldn't be going to party, so... That's irrelevant. Maybe. Maybe my parents yeah. put me on their hip and took me to a party. Yeah. So when you were 25, it was 1995, young crazy, it would be the equivalent of being a 1970 party. Hippies and stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Listen, when I grew up, um, when <laughs> I grew up, the big, big, big Halloween costume was 1950s. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And we were like, oh, my gosh. Like, what did they wear? And we had like poodle skirts and, you know, guys would like slick their hair yeah. back and stuff. And it was like, yeah, because the 1950s were ages ago. And so that's like how the 70s was like disco right. and stuff. So that, but then when I got older, mm. I was like, wait, we were doing the 50s in the 80s because it was only 30 years ago. Yeah. But, but in, but in the 80s, we thought it was like, you know, well, you know, how will we ever know what they were wearing? And, you know. Yeah. So that's one of the things I was thinking. Um, So. I got this jacket. It's like an apex. You sound a little sick. <clears throat> um, I'm not. Uh, I don't. have to go to a, I have to go to the, the the Lehigh Valley Sheep and Wool Festival tomorrow. And if you make me bring hoof and mouth to those poor sheep, you're uh, gonna get it. Yeah, my hand. I have some dots on my hand. You ever, you ever watch Pirates of the Caribbean? Yeah, I need you not like to a... touch anything. Hey, it's all right. You should have gloves on. So I got this jacket. Oh, look, his eagle, his eagle wings. So I have a 90s party. Spence, his eagle span, his, his wingspan. Ah! I have this 90s party, and um, I didn't know what to wear. Like, what do you really, the 90s is so confusing. I know. Because my big, so blah. my big qualm about it, I know, and a lot of people, I think, I don't know, like, I don't know what, what's going on. What was it? Like vanilla ice? Here's what it was, and this is like my, maybe lines. this is my issue with the Oh, you could have to press and put lines in. No, no but frost, they're back. I can get frosted tips. Yeah, frosted tips. Um, but that stuff is overalls, all back. Overalls, because nobody knows how to make their new style. A lot of guys we wear in plaid. A lot of girls, I don't know. Um, oh, like grunge? Yeah, I guess that was the 90s. That was the 90s. Yeah. That was like, yeah, so like early 90s is sort of a transition out of 80s, mm-hmm. and that's kind of like the track suits that are like yeah, colored. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the late 90s is grunge, like a lot more like bag... But really, what if I could describe the 90s, it was a time where people didn't care. 
Right. About like what? Anything. About anything. <laughs> it was like, well, because the eighties was so um, manicured, so meticulous, yeah. so shoulder pads, you know, the wing, the colors, the hair, the the hairspray. The, yeah. And like nineties, like a lot of even like just the where the the mental where people were mentally were at. Yeah. It was it was sort of like that Fight Club X. Here we are now, entertain us. Yeah. Well, then that was Woodstock of I just watched that document. Really good documentary. Woodstock. Woodstock ninety nine. I was being um. Kurt Cobain. No, I know. But I'm saying Woodstock 99. Oh, that um, mess that didn't work? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> but part of it was just saying the people were at a complete, like the, the youth were mm. at just an angry at everything. Like, yeah, it was uh, like Corn and. um Okay. And who are these other guys? All those. Where it's like, wow. Like yeah, that, yeah. That kind of stuff. Um, But. So, so, yeah, back to what I was saying. Okay. It's tough when people are like, let's have a 90s party. And it's like. The fashion of the nineties was kind of like, who cares what we wear? Like throw something on. I'm sure you could find something that was iconic, you or maybe could. like I mean, a you, star. You, like, yeah, like you, you look at you know the Fresh Prince and like yeah. that kind of stuff. But really, it's just like oversized collared shirts and, and jeans. You could wear like a big suit. Color. You know how the the men's suits used to be really big. Yeah, and they had like you know they had like the fun like imagine your Brad Pitt and Fight Club like mm-hmm. that kind of. Yeah, yeah, they had the loose suits. Yeah, which I'm sure you could get at a thrift shop. <laughs> but no, you're gonna be you're gonna be a sports fan of the '90s. Yeah. So so I oh yeah so I I luck, I lucked upon this. Yeah. I was on Craigslist just looking up vintage things. I can't believe Craigslist still exists. I love Craigslist. Um, and around me a nice guy who it's good conditions from like '95 or something, but just like you, is, you're in good yeah, condition. <laughs> it's it, it's a uh, it's just an old sports jacket. I'm just gonna do it up a bit. But two things I'd say about it. One, um, maybe I forgot two things, but I know one thing for sure. That is, I'm like, I'm gonna start holding on to clothing. Like it's uh, kind of crazy. Like this was just a normal no, jacket. Yeah. That like you'd buy like the same way I just run to the store, like, oh, I have to go to an Eagles game. Let me get that Eagles sweatshirt. Of course, over there. of course. You just you you wanna show the emblem on the back? That's ah, all right. You all can right. see the small emblem. It's right the there. same one, yeah. Okay. But like it, a, no, uh, you just realized that Regular stuff of today will be know, worth it's, something it's in thirty so, it's, years. It's so quick and like it's not quick. It's dumb. I, I it's like people see, saving baby be- because baby babies. This was a local <laughs> baby babies. This was a local guy who was just he just had the jacket. Yeah, but well, the, like, I was looking it up and I got it for a deal. Like this is on like the throwback websites, mm-hmm. vintage websites used for like a hundred and twenty, hundred thirty dollars. Like selling, like sold out. It's not enough to hold it for thirty years. No, it's not. I'm just saying, don't try to go into that line of work. Oh, I'm not. I'm just saying. You just said it. <sighs> How you guys doing? It's a beautiful Friday. Um, I just got done another day of work. Mm-hmm. Um, it's great. You're still you're still doing the two jobs. Still doing the two jobs. Um, it, it's fun. Today was was sort of hectic. There wasn't we were down people, and so I was watching two classrooms during nap time, and which is fine because they're all napping. They all woke up, both classes, um, before any other other teachers came back. And so they were up and like you just saw them crawling towards oh me. Oh, my gosh. And like it was too much to handle. And so then... um, Oh, I would love that. It was very cute. There was like one thing I was, I was like... Because I was... I try to get stern, but then they always laugh at me because I'm, I'm not... Oh, my god, I can't really be mean. Right. So I'm like, lay down. And the one little girl, Margo, was like lay down <laughs> and then so then i like i was doing it bigger and bigger and then so there must have been so like, you were riling them up there must, yeah no by the, by the end of it i'm like this is full anarchy and yeah the only way i can control them is in a way making it worse right and so by the end i'm like lay, and they're all like standing up i'm like down it and they oh, all hit the ground so cute. It, was, it was i know and i kind of felt powerful like when i would oh i felt God. like the roar of the crowd <laughs> Um, but yeah, so work was good. Uh, work's not over. Um, I work on the weekend too. Do I'm, you? I'm in, yeah, I'm enjoying both jobs though. Okay. I think I'm getting into the swing of things. Right. I don't know. Like a lot of things, knowing, so park jobs coming to an end, summer job. Like a lot of things, when there is an end date, it doesn't feel so every day is the same. And like just bouncing to like two different realms. I think it's very easy to get like loss in one hamster wheel of life right and so then when you're like working with other people seeing other things it's like oh there's other 
there's other worlds going on. Majority yeah, world. that's really interesting because um, Preston was, you just said he's supposed to cut your hair. So he was cutting hair. He was a hairdresser. Yeah. And then he switched and he started working as a fishmonger. And um, he was saying that he doesn't know what he's going to do next, but he knows he's not going to always be a fishmonger. Yeah. And he really enjoys this checking life out. Yeah, I, I like it too. Um, I, I think... I think that like I, I definitely hold this aspect maybe to a fault in a lot of degrees of my life, but there really is so much to experience. And I think the fear to not is the fear to not in a lot of things, which is you think if you do too many things then you're never going to do one thing. Right. But in reality, it's like, I think it's good to, to take in, all walks of life and, and enjoy. If you can, yeah. If you can, if it's if it's possible to you. It doesn't mean that you're just doing odd jobs and, and right. you're a, a leaf in the wind. It's like, it's the same way I would say with dating, right? Like some people just jump in a relationship and that's it forever. Yeah. And can you do dating wrong and just be too whim- whimsy and like don't care about anything too much? Right. That would be the equivalent to I'm doing odd jobs, never can or, hold yeah, a job Yeah, quitting down. every week or something, but yeah. But I think, like, genuinely pursue, like, pursuing different fields and giving your time and energy. And there might be one day where you go into a job and you never want to leave. Yeah. And I would rather find that than be stuck in the, in the first job, right. in the first state, in the first relationship, and be like, this is as good as it gets. Right. And so right now, I'm, I'm dating two girls. <laughs> The Are park, you? the park, and the school. Oh, I thought you were making a joke. No, well, that was the joke. It's like that's doing two things at once. Christian podcast. Um, it is Friday, guys, and on Friday, do we have one last week? I think we, we might have missed a walk a, a freaky Friday, a Doctor Seuss Friday. Um, but we do have a playlist for it that you can yeah. check out. Yeah, and there's this might be thirty six or something. So there's so many. Yeah. So, uh, what do we, what's Dr. Seuss Friday? You're asking Dr. Seuss Friday is when we read a Dr. Seuss book, um, to you, to each other for the first time. And, um, we talk about it mm-hmm. and Dr. Seuss was an awesome guy. He stood the test of time and uh, winning. He definitely found his author, his passion. You know, he yeah. probably bounced around a little bit, yeah. but he said story books are, are for me. <clears throat> and being a writer, especially of children's books, um, that every book was different, you know. Yeah, he, and he got to. And so, why we like Doctor Seuss books specifically is because yes, they do have clever and creative rhymes and characters, but there's always a, a meaning in yeah. each of the books, and I, and we we think that is what makes them so still exist. Yeah, still still exist and, and powerful for children because children ain't dumb. You know, I've I've learned that in in my few years. Yeah, they're they're innocent and simple and goofy, but they're learn they're taking in everything at and once. they're able to yeah, yeah. And, and and when when they're like there are meanings that like this that will stick with them it's the perfect combination for um a brain yeah. it is the willingness you know children want to learn they want to copy how you said you lay down and then yeah. lay down you know that energy willingness to learn and then the capacity of the brain which is like beep 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 beep, beep pulling everything in yeah so i mean they're the they're they're perfect. And so, yeah, we so we read it and then we use our adult brains and we try to dissect it from the adult side and say, yeah. like, let's de- it's deconstructionism of Dr. Seuss. That's something you don't get to do if you just are no, reading it as a bedtime story absolutely and not. your audience yeah. member went to sleep. And obviously, <laughs> and obviously uh, it's a Christian podcast. And one thing that we've started realizing late in the game of doing these is it's actually a really good um, mental tool yes. to help with your bible learning right um bible learning just like the same way children with dr seuss they get uh it's hard for them to focus too long on right. meanings so then we dr seuss is like keeps you engaged keeps you engaged keeps you engaged a lot of times with the bible it, we can find ourselves just getting lost in the right what what does it mean what does it mean and so the we break down a dr seuss book on a small scale. And then when you're reading the Bible, instead of just being like, uh, this is a, a biblical or a biographical story. Right. It's, you can start saying, 
But what does that mean? What does right. what does the Lorax mean in this book? Right. What is what does this mean in the Bible? What does this yeah, mean in the Bible? And you feel more confident, like if you read if you read this book, mm-hmm. we feel super confident to be like, I think it means this, or I think it means that, or this stood out to me. But when you're reading the Bible, you don't really have that confidence usually. Yeah. And you think, um, I need someone to tell me what this means. Yes. I I need someone to tell me what what this this verse and line mean. Um, doing something like this is like maybe I could figure it out. Like maybe it means something to me that it doesn't mean to the person on the internet. Yeah. And then that's the, and the, once again, that's the thing, right? So these books are meant for kids. It's not meant to you. You never explain to the kid. So this means be good to other people. Right. And the same thing with the Bible. It's like it, 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 you're perceiving it just you know as a child of God, right. the way you're supposed to perceive it. Right. Cause it's given to you in that digestible manner. And then you perceive it however you want. Nobody wants to listen to someone, except for us. You know, explain to a, if you're a child. Right. This is what this means. We're just we're we're just getting well for new people. We have yeah. a lot of new people. We have a lot of new people. Oh, shout, shout out! Congratulations! We have 300 subscribers. We do. But it's not so much congratulations because so this, this award was for 100, and this award was for 200. Oh. So. And this award. <laughs> No, yeah. we're waiting for the next donation. Oh, so thank you. Thank you, 300 subscribers. But, you know, subscribers is, is, is a tricky word. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you why. We, well, you have friends, right? Yeah. And you don't say, you don't you pat yourself on the back when you say, I have 100 people who like me. Right. You say, I have 100 friends. Right. It goes both ways. This isn't, you're all with us. This is, we're all together as right. friends. Yeah. All right, let's get into it. <clears throat> so we're reading Gerald McBoinboin, um, based on the Academy Award-winning picture, motion picture by Dr. Seuss. Real quick so we can get into it. Can you explain why this is a little bit different than a normal Dr. Seuss book? Dr. Seuss wrote a story that was made into a cartoon, Gerald McBoinboin. And who, so he didn't write a book. He wrote a story, he wrote a story that was to, meant to be a Meant cartoon. to be a cartoon. Okay. And then the people who worked on it, the animators and the um, illustrators and the... Every, the, the people who put the score made this award-winning cartoon. It won an Oscar. Uh, like so that's why he says the Motion Academy. Um, and then it was so popular that they wanted more episodes. And so I think it went off and had a little life of its own. Yeah. So the illustrations do look different. But of course, once again, it was, it was Dr. Seuss planting a seed. Yes. So Dr. Seuss wrote the motion picture. And so this book is almost the like original story the yeah. original story from that motion picture but the um pictures were by mel crawford so had, had this been written as a book we do know it would have been by theo lesig right because if he didn't draw the pictures as well it was theo lesig right. let's get into it this is the story of gerald mccloy and the strange thing that happened to that little boy they say it all started when gerald was two that's the age kids start talking at least most of them do well, when he started talking, he, you know what he said? He didn't talk words. He went, boing, boing instead. What's that? cried his father, his face turning gray. That's a very odd thing for a young boy to say. And poor Gerald's father rushed to the phone and quick dialed the number of Dr. Malone. Come over fast, the poor father pled. Our boy can't speak words. He goes, boing, boing instead. I see, said the doctor. It's just as you said. He doesn't speak words. He goes, boing, boing instead. I have no cure for this. I can't handle the case. And he packed up his pills and walked out of the place. Then months passed and Gerald got louder and louder. Till one day he went boom like a big keg of powder. It was then that his father said this is enough. He'll drive us both mad with this terrible stuff. A boy of his age shouldn't sound like a fool. He's got to learn words. We must send him to school. So Gerald marched off an obedient creature. But he soon was back home with a note from the teacher. From public school seven to Mrs. McCloy, your son Gerald's the most helpless boy. We cannot accept him for we must have a rule that pupils must not go cuckoo in our school. Your boy will go honk all his life, I'm afraid. Sincerely yours, Fanny Schultz, teacher of first grade. And as little Gerald grew older, he found, when a fellow goes bam, no one wants him around. When a fellow goes screek, he won't have any friends. For once he says, clang, 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 all the fun ends. Nay, nay, they all shouted, your name's not McCloy. You're Gerald McBoinboing, the noise-making boy. 
Poor Gerald decided that he had no place at home in the school in the whole human race. And so he concluded that drear and forlorn, he would just disappear in the thick of a storm. But as he was boarding a slow-moving freight, a voice from the darkness called out, Stop, boy, wait. Aren't you Gerald McBoing Boing, the lad who makes squeaks? My boy, I have searched for you many long weeks. I can make you the most famous lad in the nation, for I own the Bong 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 radio station. I need a smart fellow to make all the sounds, who can bark like a dog and bay like the hounds. Your gong is terrific, your toot is inspired. Quick, come to Bong Bong Bong, make Boing Boing, you're hired. Now his parents, proud parents, are able to boast that their Gerald's clop clop bang is known coast to coast. Now Gerald is rich, he has friends, he's well fed, cause he doesn't speak word, he goes, words, he goes boing boing instead. Sweet. <clears throat> that is sweet. I like that. Can would you would would you be surprised at won an Oscar? Nah, an Oscar. That's like for movies. Yeah. Like, like Saving Private Ryan. Yeah, it won an well, it won in the animated. You know, sometimes yeah. Pixar wins and stuff. Um, the sound effects in the old days. Uh, in the old days, it was radio, not TV. Yeah. And so they would have like the horses are coming. You know how they have the guy, and they didn't have computer keyboards yeah. and um, sound effects already into the software. And so you know, so like that's a super old reference. Yeah. Um. But, yeah, I'm wondering, like, the mindset of the people back then, how they would receive the story. Like, was the story um, surprising to them? The ending? You know what I mean? Because in this day and age, okay, so it's, it's 2022, it's 2023. Yeah. That is such an old story. We are so used to now celebrating people's differences and yeah. letting everybody be individual. I'm wondering, at the time that it was presented, was it, like what i think so the yeah. 50s were we were just talking about the age ages of you know decades and yeah the 50s was very conservative you, yeah, and, yeah. Well, not more conservative is, is like let's be the same like, conformist I feel like, yeah i feel like that was like as much like let's be a cookie cutter society right. like, just look at the the 1950s housewife and kitchen yeah the goal wasn't to be different the goal right. was this yeah well, it you, was all you, about the neighbors right you, yeah even on commercials it was like that was probably what is the the good american citizen look like right keeping and, up with the with the with the joneses yeah yeah and, and so i, I everything I think, was matching i think this was different for for yeah and that's why like one of the things that you have to remember with dr is that like yeah i know he's gotten flack um for some of his books for some of the wording in the books but um, like I don't want to. I want to tread carefully here yeah. by not, you know, denouncing. You know, if he did use words that were a little, of course, but yeah. We can't even get that book anymore. It's yeah. It, it's just it's always needs to put in context of, of what time he's from. Yeah. And yes, not saying what he said is fine, but as much as he's like, he said the wrong things in the time. How much did he say that was right. that was against the grain? That that was yeah. Standing up for the kid who had, you know, it's a joke, boing, boing. But that's, right. that's why we read Dr. Seuss is all messages hidden behind jokes and stuff. Yeah. It was a, a kid who did not fit in. They were trying to get doctors to help him. And it's like, you're praising right. this this child who has learning disabilities, basically, right? Right. Um, And so it's, it is interesting. I, I do like it. Um, And you know what? You say it's it's out of the time mm-hmm. but it's not really I no mean, no like uh i when i was reading i was just thinking there's a kid in, in my class that's um non-verbal and it's like i do obviously you know you need a <laughs> this isn't like saying you never need to be verbal but i do find some of the other teachers and maybe even like the parents stuff are a little too hard of like okay no you you're too old to not be speaking like speaking right like, right let him grow and and like do like his own thing. I'm not saying he's going to work for a radio station to make noises, but yeah, it's this idea that just because someone isn't being the exact type of person you're gonna you think they should be, that they should should have to change or they're right. wrong, right? And, and they need to change. Yeah. And also, my one one of my takeaways from it is 
it ends nice or does it right like i think it, like there's a certain aspect of people coming back around only when oh you uh, yeah. you, you provide you when he was accepted yeah by other people so can you stand there and accept me family, when other people aren't accepting me yeah it didn't say you know his family family came as soon as they found out he ran away it was when he was famous yeah so if we want to um equate that with with um or parallel it with christianity uh you know and i've said this before we read the bible knowing how the end of the story turns yeah. out and so you know it's kind of easy er to be a christian especially yeah. because we know how it turned out we know he rose from the dead we know you know and so you're you're like yeah i'm a christian you want to be on that team you want to be proud but the the apostles and his followers who stood with him when he was being ridiculed yeah when when he was being called a fraud when he was being called you know a prankster uh it, they were the they were they were doing something much more than we're doing because yeah. we are doing it after he succeeded. Yeah, no, uh, definitely, and, and I think you know it makes you think of uh, when Jesus said you can't preach in your own city, like yeah, uh, or something like that. And yeah. it's it's that idea that like from his perspective, like he was thinking of it as I'll never be able to fit in, but it's you'll you'll did he care? Yeah. Oh yeah, he, he tried said, to run away on yeah, the train. Said, I, okay, I, I don't feel like I belong anywhere. That's in right. That's right. And um, sometimes the, 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 the person doesn't care and everyone else cares. But no, you're right. He was being affected. He was, he was being affected. And I think sometimes you need to remember that your gift is meant for somewhere. And like to right. not, I, I think you, there needs to be like, it's hard, but there needs to be a confidence in not trying to make your life about appeasing everybody else. Right. And it's like, you'll have a lot of people tell you what you're doing is wrong. Yeah. But. If if you don't think it's wrong, then you can't. Because guess what? If someone thinks anybody this this goes for anything thinks what you're doing is wrong, as soon as it's the lucrative thing to do, or just look at that cool thing to do. Yeah. How many how many things um. You know you see you see it with fashion even where it's like, uh like you will make fun of someone and then oh, yeah. as soon as it's cool it's oh that's like so that's like really cool of course and so you can't base things around other people because no. if he did stop going boing boing maybe just stop talking at all and then 20 years later see someone boing boing in on the radio and it was like i used to boing boing <laughs> it's like yeah just boing, boing 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 <laughs> but um yeah and anything else um on the boing boing specifically no it reminded me of daisy Maisie. So go on our playlist and read Daisy Head Maisie and read the Daisy Head Maisie book. She had something unusual. They called the doctor in that book. Yeah. School was involved in that book. Um, people wanting her to fit in, but I don't even remember how that story ended. I'll have to. I'll have to look back on the playlist. They tried cutting it off, and then she started dying. Okay. And then, or wait, no, it was like then she she loved herself, and then it went away. Oh, that's right. The pedals started going. She yeah yeah that was that was an interesting book. Wait, oh, I just lost my train of thought of, of one of the things I was going to say. Oh, yeah, okay. And this is so Daisy Head Maisie was kind of like very abstract. I think another thing about the last thing I want to say about this book is the silliness of the boing boing. Yeah. It is useless and detrimental to, to communication, right? And I think that's one of the things that like um, we with gifts or like something that makes us unique. I think we all have gifts and, yes, and of we all have value to the world. And a lot of times we're looking to find what is it? What is my special good gift? It might be a bad quality, right? Yeah. Like it, it might be something that's like, well, that can't be it. Yeah. And you never know. Like you never know if, if like your, your stubbornness is going to you know in the long run make you make you a, Come in a, handy a, a loyal something. defender of, right. of a group of people right or you know like fill in the blank but yeah. it's like we all have qualities good and bad and you know we should we obviously for ourselves want to work on good qualities right. but like we should never assume to know that a quality of or like a physical quality and uh, whatever it is is not going to one day be like our gift that we're meant to spread with people. Right. 
you know? Yeah, there was another book because you said physical quality. I believe one of the books that the little guy had something physically different and then they were like people people were against them but then he ended up using it for good. But what I was going to say was I find that they're saying he can't do this, he can't do this. Using sound effects instead of actual language is more inclusive than using <clears throat> language because speaking English or speaking French or speaking Chinese, you can only speak to yeah. um, those people. But if you... if you, This if, man is speaking in tongues. He's speaking in sound effects. He has the Holy Spirit inside of him. Everyone can understand sound effects. Yeah. You know? So it, it is kind of like you are doing something that's not the way everyone else is doing it. Um, and they didn't even consider why, you know. Yeah, right. So, uh, I, uh, we're running over time, but um, he couldn't communicate, right? Right. But his job, it's not like he got, a, like he ended up doing something that didn't have to do with communication. And, and it was, he ended up communicating with more people than was in his hometown right he's on the radio like they were watching him because he's speaking to everyone right speaking to everyone yeah the person who knew who, when when his parents were in a room by himself with him they're like you're driving us insane because we don't we can't speak with you right that person ends up speaking to everyone yeah ain't that that's ain't how that new magic. music gets started right people yes. do things differently yeah and so that's how the different over yeah. time the genres yeah genres that's a little boing boing for your Friday. Go out, have fun. Um, if you buy any clothes, save them for thirty years. They'll be worth. <laughs> they'll be worth Double. probably with in inflation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They'll be worth the same with inflation, but it's like an investment, better than cash. No, don't do it. Peace, Spencer. I can't stop. Right. It ha it has strep on it, so now you just got it again. You can't get it again. I am just gonna throw it. I'm gonna. I'll take an I'm antibiotic. It away. I'll take an I'm antibiotic right now. I'm throwing it away. I'll Spencer, no, not on air. Drugs. 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 <laughs> Oh, <laughs>